MMA D Fight fans, this is Administrator Nick and Adam Carr. We're here with the second podcast. Not going to be as long this time. We're going to shorten it down a bit. One to two topics, just a couple fan questions. We're going to talk about Gina Carano, Holly Holm, Cyborg Santos, the women's MMA divisional layout right now. Adam, what's up? Ah, not much. Still waking up yourself? Ditto. <laughs> Same here. Well, first off, I want to bring up, our uh, first topic is going to be Gina Carano. I don't know if you've seen this Arsenio Hall interview. Have you? Uh, no, not yet, but I know the idea is that she's going to be sitting down with Dana White soon. They're, it's pretty clear they want to hash something out. Yeah. The, um, the, 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 the basic gist of it, yes, was she was on the Arsenio Hall show, cracked a few jokes about it. She was asked if she would ever return... To MMA, and her first response was, yes, I'm actually considering it right now. And then Arsenio Hall asked her to elaborate, and she went on to say, yes, well, I'm meeting with Dana White next week. This is her, her, her basic quote stated that she would either plan something out, finally get a fight in, finally start doing something with MMA, or officially announce her retirement. So next week we'll either get, you know, because she's already contractually obligated to the UFC because she had a strike force contract and she got which got swallowed up with the UFC um so if she were to come back in MMA it would it would only be with the UFC unless they decided to let her out of her contract to fight somewhere else um and so we'll either see her get set up uh with a new contract of sorts or to be or to just fill out fulfill out her old one or she'll announce her retirement those are the three options I feel we have. How do, how do I feel about that? I don't know. I mean, obviously, if she gets thrust into a title shot immediately, I'm going to be pissed off. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I like that. You know what I mean? I, uh, I love Gina back in her day. I mean, I've loved MMA since 2007, which was when I first got a bit, uh, a, a bit of it. Uh, I remember... Uh, sparring with a woman, not thinking it was going to be much, and she beat this holy shit out of me. You know what I mean? <laughs> And ever since then, I grew a respect for women's MMA. I started watching it from there. Gina was one of the first women I started watching. I remember the, one of the first fights I ever watched was Julie Kedzie and her in a three-round, three-by-three uh, fight, you know, and it was a great was fight. Was one of the ones on CBS? It was, yeah, it was on uh, Elite XC. Yeah. If you remember that one. Yeah, it was an awesome fight. Those, those ladies always deliver. I'm a big fan of Gina. I just hope that that's not where the UFC decided to go. Just throw her, thrust her right into a title shot. First of all, I don't think that's fair to her. I don't even think that's fair to Ronda. That's not fair to the fans. I don't think it's. Yeah, I don't think it's a good business decision. Any. Anyway, I mean, people would tune in to watch it, but I, I think yeah, there'd be a lot more I'm negative. Like that clearly beats about the bottom line. Um, the, the deservingness of that fight versus the revenue that fight would generate. It's clear they'd be making that fight for the revenue more than the deservingness. Well, yeah, I mean, they would probably say, "Oh, she deserves it. She helped do this and this for MMA." Well, that's but I mean, I mean, doing something for a sport can only go so far. It's like giving Hoist Gracie a title fight just strictly because he's helped start it out. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I feel you there. It's, it's the same thing. You can't do that. You know what I mean? It just can't happen. I mean, that, it, that would seriously would be like it is. What, Hoist hasn't fought in seven years. She hasn't fought in five years. Which is why I'm surprised their strike force contract is still, uh... Yeah, I guess that shit just does, Yeah, I'm surprised that shit doesn't expire. You would think it'd have an expiration date on it. I guess it doesn't. Because uh, usually contracts are for length or number of fights, and... Maybe it was just one of those things where like, well, you know, we have Gina locked up, Strike Force thinking we don't want to put a length on it, we just want her for as long as we can have her. Yeah, I guess so. Um, well, if she were to come back, I think fights with, you know, women who are starting out, maybe women from the tough thing, just to see how she's doing, like against maybe Shayna Baszler or Jessamine Duke, um, makes sense to me. Just strictly because they're they're less experienced, but they're they're obviously in the UFC for a reason. They're 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 uh, they're legit fighters. And if Gina wants to prove she is, I think fights with uh, the those women make sense. You see, the one I'm thinking is you know Gina's going to come back after like a you know, three four year layoff. We know she has the skill. Right now, it's do the skills hold up and does she have the desire? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Kat Zingano's been out for a long time. I want to see her up against Zingano. If she beats Zingano, give her a title shot right off of that. That's perfect for the UFC because it doesn't give her too many opportunities to get caught and randomly get knocked out. It gives Zingano a great opportunity. If she beats Gina Carano, her star is going to skyrocket even more than it had before. Yeah. I'd say her popularity is probably dwindling a bit on based on the injury alone. But if Gina beats Zingano, uh, and put it like a co-main event of a Fox card, mm-hmm. then you better believe the pay-per-view sales for Gina Carano and Ronda Rousey are going to be through the roof for a women's main event. Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, what is it? I think uh, if the if whoever fights Ronda next, which I hope is, G- uh, what, not Gina, um, Kat Zingano, um, I think that's a great fight. I still, uh, but yeah, I mean, the fact that... Uh, Cat has has been injured for so long and and um, what is it D- doesn't really have much uh, momentum anymore has lost it due to, due to the loss of time and she, man she's had such a poor last year basically yeah, with, with her the injury and, and with her husband and all that and she's staying optimistic throughout this whole thing she still does interviews here and there about it and. It's, like she doesn't go too far into it, but the fact that she's willing to do interviews and at least talk about her fighting career and, and how what's happening is affecting it and what she'll do and um, I think man, I mean I think that's tough. I don't know. I think I think a, kind of a tune up or a warm up fight is is, is going to be beneficial to Zingano anyway. I mean, coming Probably, back after yeah. this long being out and go straight to Ronda Rousey, that's almost the recipe for disaster. For her, just based on you know. You know what they talk about, you know, ring rust, cage rust, being in fight shape. She's probably not going to be in fight shape her first time back. And that's why I think, like, a, a fight versus Gina, who is, we know she has a skill. If, if Kat can beat Gina, that's a statement. And that'll also help propel pay-per-view sales for Kat versus Ronda if that happens, too. I'm assuming the next Ronda Rousey title fight will be on pay-per-view. All of them have been to this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, when, when, I mean... Zach doesn't want to admit it, but she is one of the <laughs> she is one of the premier fighters to to show on pay per view right now. She 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 gets the sale. I mean, we're not in, we don't have guys like Anderson Silva and GSP, and so everybody has this you know thought about like all the biggest stars get like five hundred buy five hundred thousand buys or something like that um, on a card where the co main event got stuck, you know, and the the main event just uh, was not. Um, advertised at all by the other main event fighter um you know i say that her pay-per-view did it uh decent thus far out of all pay-per-views i don't know how 171 has done yet we haven't gotten the numbers but thus far it's done the most out of any uh boxing nothing's gotten past up to, it yet. up to this year up to this year i, I mean i add boxing to that like because i've checked the numbers boxing hasn't done higher than what her pay-per-view did either um, but, I mean, that also comes on to what we were saying in the last podcast. And this year has kind of been lackluster with big fights. I will say that, yes, I agree. But the the name Ronda Rousey alone, and that is the only thing that drove sales, drove it to three hundred thousand buys. Yeah. That I mean, for a woman who in in women's, I'm not saying that to be degrading to women, but women's MMA is still the minority of the sport, and there are a lot of people who refuse to watch women fight. That's that's still an impressive number. Yeah, I mean, just because she's able, I feel, and I said this uh, leading up to the fight, that many people who don't watch MMA too often watch Ronda Rousey, mainly mm-hmm. because she just brings, like, a certain flair to it. She brings a, uh, a, 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 what's the word? She brings, you know, a basic, your, your average, oh, fuck, what's the word? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, she brings oh, a certain interest, like, t- yeah. which is weird, because, People I don't I know that don't ever really watch it except for maybe when Brock Lesnar was around. Uh, they're like, oh, I heard about that girl. She's pretty crazy. And then they look, and then I show her, and then I show them clips of her, and she's like, oh, I'm watching that fight. Just off clips of her breaking other chicks' arms and talking shit, and it's just she brings that certain interest that that many other fighters can't bring out of out of people who aren't even average fans. You know what I mean? And, um, and with with Rousey, I mean she's putting herself out there she's going on espn doing these movies a lot of people say it hurts her career but in the short term it helps her marketability the only other fighter that i've seen like going on espn and going out of the way to do interviews is chris weidman but he doesn't get the fanfare of hey chris weidman's gonna be on espn like ronda rousey when like hey ronda rousey's on sports nation they they usually pump the rousey 
more than the lover of pump Chris Weidman. That that also plays into the the level of star she is. Dana White calling her the biggest star in UFC history. And that remains to be seen. I mean, she hasn't pulled the buys of Lesnar. She hasn't pulled the buys of Chuck Liddell or Randy Couture or GSP. But that's also a, a product of the card around her it hasn't been as strong as it was in the Liddell days. Yeah, and, I mean, look at look at her last card that she was in. She was in a fight card with, even though the fight wasn't that good, she was in a fight card with Dan Henderson and and uh, and um, Leona Machida. And, like, I'm talking about the the first one she was in last year, yeah. that one, and it also had Uriah Favor on the card, uh, and that one did, I forget, it was like something around 600,000 buys or something like that. And that's a, that's a smart way to do it, especially on her first pay-per-view. You need something around Ronda Rousey when she's, you know, just starting out. Yeah, and I mean, that was well played, uh, the, the pay-per-view did really well thus far, and then she was in, and then the last pay-per-view prior to that. Her last one was, of course, the Anderson, Anderson Silva, Silva one, one yeah. that went over one million buys. So we know that people have seen her. We know that people are watching her. I, there are people who watch that pay per view just to see the Ronda fight. You know what I mean? Um, it was a, yeah. you know, it was a great card overall. I'm, uh, I'm definitely excited if Gina gets into the UFC. But as for who she fights, I'd like to just see her fight. You know, some of the lower tier fighters. You know, I wouldn't even mind if it was somebody who wasn't ranked. I mean, I just feel it's fair to her. For someone who hasn't fought in five years, it just makes sense. That yeah, I, I can see I can see that side of the argument too. I mean, not not to call it a tune up fight, but uh, let's see if you can make one thirty five and let's see what you got in the ring kind of fight. You know, just like yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Some of the women off a uh, off a tough, maybe Shayna Baszler, maybe Jessamyn Duke, maybe uh, somebody in the lower tier, of the top ten, uh, like. Uh, Oh, what's her name? Jermaine De Ranaman. I don't. I mean, I, any of those fighters it makes sense yeah. to me. You know what I mean, we're gonna move on now to the next topic we had planned for today, which is lately there. Well, not lately. In the last day, there's a there was coming out of Holly Holmes' camp prior to her fight last night. There was a, they were t- they were throwing the tease out there that since Holly Holmes was having trouble getting signed by the UFC, they would go to the next best option and look for a fight with Cyborg Santos. Which I don't know why nobody's ever thought of that <laughs> fight un- up until he brought it up, which is very interesting. Um, it's definitely a, 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 an intriguing fight when I think about it. And uh, Holly Holmes put more to the to the debate when she fought last night. She fought a, a opponent, which sadly I don't know her name. I forget. I was watching <laughs> it last night. Um, I'd never watched her fight before. But the girl in the first round uh, fought somewhat similar. She obviously had a Muay Thai background. She was throwing elbows and, and trying to clinch up with Holly. Holly's style is to, you know, stick and move. And, and she did that for five straight rounds. Put her put, 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 put her kicks on her. She put her hands on her in and out. Was just thrashing her for five straight rounds. I mean, she really did, did not do much to Holly. Except for one successful elbow, I remember, in the second round. Um, and then in the fifth round, Holly puts in... Another highlight reel head kick KO and just the way she went in there for it. It looked like it was reminiscent of me of Johnny Hendricks versus Martin Campbell because she throws in this beautiful uh, right hook and then a left high kick comes right up into her face. But it, like just like the Johnny Hendricks knocked out, except for it's with a kick instead of a punch. Yeah. And that just shows you how fast she is, how good she is on her feet. It was a dominating performance. I mean. Um, and what no. is that? That makes her seven and zero with six finishes. Um, she's looking incredible as of late. I think she's. Uh, I mean, I think that fight is great. And uh, I mean, I I think it's it's too big a fight for Legacy to have. I think a fight with for Invicta or if the UFC was ever smart and finally signed her, uh, that fight would be awesome. We could highlight a Fox card for sure, like a main event. I think. What do you think about that fight? Uh, thinking about you talking about all she really uh, took was one elbow. I mean, was that a hard elbow, and did she seem to like take it was a it? successful elbow? Like she just went bam, and you hear it, and and it didn't, and it looked like it hurt her. It didn't look like it rocked her. Like okay. she was like, oh shit, I'm almost out, kind of thing. It was just the only real successful thing that her opponent landed. Okay, I mean that's that's the only one of the things about Holly Holm is the questions are you know. How is her defensive ground game, especially off her back, and yeah. how is oh, her We didn't chin? see much of that. I mean, she got a takedown in, like, round three and did some and put in some ground and pound, but it wasn't, like, you know, cyborg's ground and pound. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I don't think any woman in the world has her ground and pound. 
and I mean, with, with we were talking about this also on the last podcast, is one of the advantages that people don't realize about home striking is she's not only tall and long, she knows how to keep that distance. She knows how to use her range, which makes it very hard to shoot on someone like that because you got to shoot from the outside. If you're trying to set up a takedown and, like, lazily throwing hands and feet out there, she's going to counter off of that all day. Yeah. I think... I think that fight, uh, if they're going to make that fight, I think Invicta needs to jump on that. I think Shannon Knapp's got to be going like, um, oh, Jesus, I need that fight. She already has Cyborg. She's got to she's gotta try and buy out her her contract from Legacy. If I'm not mistaken, though, I, th- I could have sworn I heard somewhere, but it sucks that I don't have this confirmed. Uh, I believe that that fight, that title fight, was her last fight with Legacy's contract. So, I, mean, I think I heard something like that, too, and... It would make sense with all the contract negotiations she's been going through lately. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense that this fight would be her last. That if she made an impressive performance, the UFC would have possibly performance. The UFC would have possibly signed her if whatever negotiations her and her management that that went sour didn't happen. Um, I think that fight makes sense uh, for Shannon Knapp. I think what makes more sense, honestly, is if Invicta signs um, Holly Holmes, signs her. Puts her in the 135 division, puts her against somebody who's, uh, I mean, I know the 135 uh, division um, isn't the greatest in Invicta. So, I mean, it makes sense to put her against somebody in that division uh, and then have Cyborg finally do what she's always been trying to say she will do. We never know if it'll happen, but Cyborg's always been saying, hey, I want to drop to 135. I'll do it so I can fight Ronda. I'll fight. This is what, this is quote what Cyborg said. She said she'll drop down to 135. She'll fight in Invicta for the title at 135 at some point, win it, and then go to the UFC at 135, which is kind of fucked up for Invicta. But that's her plan. That's what she said she wants to do this year. Let's see if she'll do it. If that fight is to happen, I would think it'd be at 135. I, I don't know if Holly would be down to just stick up at 145. Who knows? Um, that's up to her. I thought I, I would think that this fight should happen at 135. Everybody wants to see the Cyborg Ronda f- ha- uh, fight happen, and we all know that it's only going to happen at 135. So it's really up to Cyborg, I feel. Um, she was asked on uh, Inside MMA prior to that fight, uh, the Holly Holmes fight, that she was called out by her team and how she thought about that fight, and she'd be down. Um, she's obviously more interested in the Ronda fight. I think uh, both parties are. But yeah. why not? Why not best go to the next best thing? Yeah, I mean it's the next best thing for each other, for Holly and Cyborg to fight each other. I mean they're the two biggest names in MMA right now, and there's a reason for that because they're the two names in MMA that well next to Kat Zingano that really pose a serious threat to Ronda Rousey. That's why I mean, they're such they're, big they're names. They're the killers out there right now. They're they're the sharks in the water. They are, and what's sad about it is they're not in the UFC. That's what everybody's complaining about, and I think those complaints are justified, and, and just the thought of those fights is, is, is insane because those fights just sound fun. They sound uh, like just the thought of it brings your imagination to, to light, and it's just amazing to think of those fights, and that they need to be signed. It'd be awesome to see it, but it'd also be awesome to see them watch each other or fight each other, at, rather. I th- I now, think- the only issue with them going up against each other is that eliminates one of them from immediate title contention. That does. I mean, unless they go after, unless after that fight they decide to go on another tear, and then it wouldn't, it wouldn't not make sense it, it for would them to fight each other. Them back. It wouldn't, you know, ruin their careers. Yeah, it wouldn't ruin their shots. I feel it would just take them a little longer. I'm sure that they. I'm sure other than the, I'm sure when those three fight each other, the shit can go any either way. Well, when they fight anybody else, I think it's just they're, they, you know they're gonna wreck everyone else. The reason yeah. I feel, and and I've 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 put posts on this before on the page for for our fans listening. I, I've made these debates before. The reason that I believe Holmes presents such a such a um, a dangerous skill set for Ronda is because first off, we already can admit that I, we don't think there's really any grappler that's gonna go in there and and, and beat uh, Ronda. I just don't think that's happening. Not in MMA right now. No, not that, not that we can see. I mean, Kyra Gracie's always out there talking shit, but I'm, she's not even, you know, no. She's not, she's not in that league of MMA yet. No, she's not. Um, but uh, so, I mean, no grappler's gonna go in there, especially one signed in the UFC is gonna really do it for do it, you know, make it competitive. You know what I mean? I don't, I just don't see it happening with anybody in the UFC right now. 
the reason I see Holly it, it, uh, being able to be one that can beat Ronda, and I'm a Ronda fan, but I want to be real here. I want to see her get challenged. I want to see her fight fights that make sense. I don't want her to be padded. I don't want people doubting her when her career is over. If, if they put her against the best, Holly is one of the best. One reason that she's so dangerous to Ronda is because a striker that can get away from that clinch game, get away from the takedowns and the grappling that Ronda is sure to bring in most fights, almost all fights, um, is going to be able to be successful. This girl showed the blueprint in this fight against this uh, this opponent that she won a title in last night. She stuck and moved. She 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 got out of all clinch strikes. And I mean, this girl is a, is a Muay Thai practitioner. She kept trying to put her up against the cage, and she got away. Never got, never was ever in any danger really. And um, and she showed the basic the the, the basic kind of game plan a striker should have when fighting Ronda. But she utilized it to a T for nearly 25 straight minutes until she ended it with a vicious head kick. Um, Obviously not against someone like Ronda, but she had she's shown that she has the ability to fight that kind of fight. Yeah. Will it translate to the very top level of MMA? Who there's knows? a big gap between who she was fighting and who the girls are in the UFC. And even some of the leftovers of Invicta, there's there's a big gap between Legacy and those two companies. Yeah, but I mean, she's shown that she has that skill set. Can she do it against Ronda? Who knows? Maybe not. But like I say, I mean, I want, if Ronda fights either Cyborg... That's the idea. Yeah, I mean, I'm a fan of Ronda. If she fights either Cyborg or Holly, I'm backing Ronda either way. Um, But those are the two fights that make the most sense, and Holly's skill set is why that fight makes sense. They're they're great fights. I'm excited for either fight to happen. I'm excited if Cyborg and Holly fight. I think uh, that, that that fight really does intrigue me because really? I mean we we know exactly how Holly Holmes is going to approach that fight. How Cyborg approaches that fight is why this is interesting. Is she going to try to come in with her stand up Blitzkrieg style? Is she going to try to get inside of Holly's range and clinch up and get her to the ground? And she's got probably the most destructive ground and pound in women's MMA. Mm-hmm. It, how Cyborg approaches this fight is why it interests me because if she tries I'm interested to see if she can just sling him with Holly Holm she couldn't do it with that pro kickboxer uh, bar or whatever from the Netherlands but that was in a kickboxing fight fighting a kickboxer in a kickboxing match is different than fighting a kickboxer in an, um, in a, in an MMA match mm-hmm. so that's that's why it really intrigues me I, 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 I kind of for the, the sake of the whole kickboxing versus MMA argument, I do want to see Cyborg try to sling him with Holly Holm to see if she can stand in there with her. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if, if say, Holmes is able to beat Cyborg, I mean, that's a big if. I feel uh, Cyborg would be the obvious favorite in that fight. But say she beats her, man, that girl's on top of the world all of a sudden. You know, she's, she would deal with no women in MMA could really do except except that one loss on Justina's record that nobody's really ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, uh, it would definitely, it would definitely be good for Holly. It makes sense why Holly's team has called her out because just the thought of what that win could do for your career is huge. Um, I think it would be good for Cyborg too. I mean, that's a big name to put on her resume. Altogether, I think I like the, the idea of the fight, uh, if the fight would happen. I hope the UFC smartens up and signs, uh, both fighters soon. I mean, I understand why they're not signing Cyborg. They've explained why. And I'm fine with it. I take their explanation for what it is. They say they want to see her go to 135 in a couple fights. Let her do that. If Cyborg really wants to to do what she, to do it, she said she could do it, and I want to see if she can. I'm not. The best yeah, thing about it is she is still signed with Invicta. Invicta does have a 35 still. As far as I mean, if Invicta ever puts on another event, they do have a 135, and the UFC and Invicta have that fighter sharing. Mm-hmm. So if she can prove herself in Invicta, the road to the UFC is right there. It's just get it done, and that, that's really all it comes down to at this point. Yeah. We have a, we'll make it a half hour. How about we answer some questions off the Facebook page here? All right, what do we got? All right, well, the first one this is a good one. Um, what are your thoughts on the comment Dana made a few times that there is no easy fights given in the UFC, and then we see things like Eric Silva's last fight? That's a good question. I mean, that's a, I mean, uh, I would say also that I would agree that there are never really any easy fights in the UFC, but there are some fights where you got to think, hmm, why did you make that fight? Like, if you look at uh, Eric Silva's last fight, he fought a a guy who was making his debut. Uh, Eric Silva obviously thrashed him. Um, 
And yeah, I mean, there are certain fights you just make and just certain fights you just don't make. I forget what Eric Silva's name was, uh, or opponent's name was. I think it was Takanori Sato. That was his name. And he beat oh, him yeah. Yeah, less than a name. minute. You know what I mean? Uh, and it was this guy's uh, debut. I'm not sure if this was like a call out, but I was very surprised at the fight. And uh, like the f when it was announced, I was like, who is this guy? You know what I mean? Um makes sense because it was it was Eric Silva coming off a fight that uh coming off a knock, knockout to now 10th ranked uh Dung Young Kim but I thought a, a better fight was warranted than that and uh but now Eric Silva's getting Matt Brown and that's a great fight I can't wait for that fight um I don't think there are any easy fights I just think sometimes uh the matchmaking just uh gets a little loopy you know what I mean e e easy fight's a tough way to put it I mean to get in the UFC, you have to prove yourself worthy of being in there on the local shows first. And they're not going to sign anyone who they don't think can't hang. Kind of like what you're saying, though. It's like sometimes they'll... It's not showcase fights to the level of what Pride would do or to the level of what boxing will do sometimes. You just pad your record. Mm -hmm. But there are clearly some fights where it's like, this is a confidence builder. You know, you got to be able to take this guy out. If you can't take this guy out, we got to rethink what, you're, what we're doing with you. And it's, it's more of like a signing for, you know, to, to use a, 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 a common joke term, what's best for business, you know. If Eric Silva couldn't get past Takanori Sato, the, all the money they've been pumping into him is kind of not worth it. But if they can get a, a nice highlight reel knockout, you know, it, it, it just looks good for Silva. But if Sato would beat Eric Silva, you know they'd start, okay, we might have something with the Sato guy. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't... Like, easy fight in protecting fighters and padding fighters, I don't believe in. A lot of people have been saying that they've been doing that with Ronda Rousey. They've given her Carmouche, Tate, and uh, Sarah McMahon. Uh, none of those are easy fights. Mm -hmm. uh, Rousey might be significantly better than all of them, but that's just because Rousey's that good. That doesn't mean they're easy fights. Yeah, I um, hate, I hate one, of the, the, one of the, the things only I... Really obvious one i can think of right now is is dc versus that last guy he fought that was a last minute replacement thing and that was all just yeah. one guy talking shit all right get in there and you guys can work it out but yeah see my, oh. that, like the thing that was really bugging most fans too was when it was rumored that uh daniel cormier would fight fei Zhao. see that's a fight that doesn't make sense but um I'm glad that the fight didn't come to fruition i'm glad fei Zhao is now fighting ryan bader that fight makes a lot more sense uh, and DC is now fighting Dan. Those fight makes sense because it's ranked guy versus ranked guy, and it's and it's lower ranked guy versus lower ranked guy. That makes sense to me. Uh, even that, there's always a lot more going on behind the scenes that we know in contract negotiation. Who is available? Where can this fight take place? All this has to be considered. And there might there might not have been a better opponent at the time they wanted DC to fight than Beja until Henderson's like, "Well, oh, I'm fine. I'm I'm Dan Henderson. I'm always down to fight." So there's there's always more going on behind the scenes than we ever know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm actually looking at this uh, Takanori Santo uh, Sato fighter. He was actually undefeated for four years straight with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wins, um, and he was the welterweight king of Pancrase champion for all for all those years until he got signed by the UFC. Um, so, I mean, uh, maybe there's some legitimacy to him. Maybe he's just big in the Japanese market that we don't know about. Um, at least I don't I don't follow the Japanese market as good as you and Zach do. Um, I mean, it's, it's hard to follow these days, especially, like, with with no major promotion. I, I, we've, had, we've brought in a couple Japanese guys in to train with us at Team Curran. So, I mean, I, I, I know who's kind of big. I, I hadn't heard of Sato before that. Um, it, it does seem like quite often when they bring in uh, guys from Asia, especially from Japan, they, they bring them in past their prime, let them get beat up, and ship them back. That, that's, that, that was always the old, uh, the, the old opinion on everyone, all the fans had in the way that Dana White and the UFC treated the Japanese fighters. Yeah. Uh, I just think, uh, I thought that was a great question. Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes there are certain fights that, that, uh, just, that turn out loopy. Last year, I mean, sometimes shit just happens. Shit goes awry, and uh, the UFC has to do other things. Sometimes they just want to make fights for the money. That's, I mean, that's been made obvious last year when they decided to give Chael John Jones and when they decided to put Tate against uh, 
Uh, I mean, well, that makes sense because Cat got injured and Tate was the, was the biggest name to put against Ronda, and I mean that paid off. I mean, look at the how the pay per view did; it paid off. Because Sometimes the fight itself was great too, and it was a great fight. Yeah, I mean, it, it won fight of the night of that card. It was a great fight. Um, Sometimes they make these decisions. We may not always agree with them, but the UFC sometimes knows what they're doing. Sometimes they make the right call on things. And whether we agree with them or not, um, it works out for the UFC. So, I mean, they have no reason to complain about their methods right now. And you um, never know when one of these mis- mismatches could end up being like a Keith Chardine versus Houston Alexander type of thing. Exactly. You never know. I mean, <laughs> that's a f- I mean, I always laugh at that fight because of the, the knockout because Keith Jardine face plants. I just always oh, imagine oh, that. Yeah. Yeah, face, just, face down, ass up. Yeah, <laughs> uh, oh, it, was, it was so funny. Houston Alexander, man, whatever happened to that guy? That's just one of those guys where he just started skyrocketing and then just boom, got blown right out of the sky. You know what I mean? Hey. <laughs> That, that, I mean, he, he was he was a he, he was a power puncher, and there's still no denying that. But oh, of course, obviously the rest of his skills are a little lacking behind. That might have to do with age, but you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. We'll end off there with our second podcast. We want to keep them short, about a half hour, unless there's like a a, a, a a plethora of shit going on. Then we want to get all three of us in. An hour and a half doesn't seem too bad anymore. Now that I know how to load these things onto the page correctly. <laughs> Because <laughs> like we did the first podcast, what Wednesday? Yeah, yeah. Now it's Saturday, and it got posted yesterday. You want to know why it took so long? Because I was st- still trying to figure out how to load everything correctly, how to how to trim and do everything uh, right. And even still, I fucked up at the end there because I guess it cuts out at the last minute of the first paper or first podcast. Sorry. And, uh, anyone, anyone listen to that though? You really didn't miss much. We were pretty much done at that. Yeah, point. we were just closing out. You know, you just talking shit. about the Chicago Cubs or anything. <laughs> yeah, poor, poor Adam. <sighs> Loving my Giants, eight no baby. <laughs> yeah, um, we're gonna sign off there. Great talking to you, Adam. We'll have you on on the oh, next one. Good. MMA D fans, comment please. Let us know what you think. Uh, give us your opinions. Uh, give us some ideas for the next topic. I'm def. Uh, the next podcast is supposed to have Chris Shemina and Zach. A.H., your uh, two most beloved <laughs> admins you probably love and adore on the page. So we're going to have Shemungerson on there, aren't we? Shemungerson, yes. If anybody does. Poor, poor Adam. <sighs> Loving my Giants. Ain't no, baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're going to sign off there. Great talking to you, Adam. We'll have you on on the oh, next one. Good. MMAD fans, comment. Please let us know what you think. Uh, give us your opinions. Uh, give us some ideas for the next topic. I'm def- uh, the next podcast is supposed to have Chris Shemina and Zach A.H., your uh, two most beloved <laughs> admins you probably love and adore on the page. So we're going to have Shemungerson on there, aren't we? Shemungerson, yes. If anybody doesn't know this, Zach, uh, his last name is Hungerson, and Chris, <laughs> Chris's last name is Shemina, so they like to call themselves Shemungerson. The Love Brothers. I'm not getting on that one, but you better believe I want to listen to that. That's going to be interesting. Oh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be so fun. It's probably going to be an hour and a half, too, because those guys can talk for days. It's going to be awesome. They're going to talk so much shit. It's going to be amazing. If you guys want to finally hear Zach and Chris, we're going to have it on the next podcast. Listen up, and please give us some comments. We appreciate you guys. Thank you. Bye, on, guys.